your boy Mike from Trouble Down Productions. In this video, we're going to be doing my review of Fear the Walking Dead Season 2, Episode 2. Now, I will say that this episode was a little slower, but it had a lot of character development. We actually found out a lot of stuff in this episode. Starts off a little creepy, man. You see these kids playing on the beach, and then you see these walkers coming up, up out the water and shit, and you're thinking in your head, like, oh, damn, man. Kids about to get eight. Shit's about to get real. And then last minute, you see that the kids carry something over to the fence. And and the walkers are they're like separated from the beach and it's all fenced off and stuff. So that's pretty cool. We find out uh what was all in that log book that Nick grabbed last episode from that ship that went down. And uh it was basically just saying that you know California's down, the military burnt that uh military base down, and all kinds of crazy mess that you know I, I think California's where Strand was trying to go. And now we find out it's all burnt, so they end up taking a detour. And it's kind of funny how, you know, everybody's been talking about the the, the little dispute between Salazar and Strand. But in this episode, you can kind of tell it a little bit more. Um, because when they were trying to decide where to go, Strand was all like, you know, kind of shaking his head like he didn't want to go where Daniel was telling him. And he just looks up, the first person he looks at is Salazar. And Salazar just kind of looking at him like you know it's the better idea. So it's, you know, it's pretty cool to end up going to this wildlife rest refuge and they out in the, in like in front of the house and shit talking about, oh, we're, we're, we're not going to hurt you. We're just people. You know what I mean? We need help. This, that, and the other. And I'm just sitting there like, if I was in that house, like, he, he'd be meeting me with a fucking gun considering everything else that's going on. They basically meet this family uh, a husband, a wife, uh, two kids, and then an older son. And you can tell off gate that just something ain't right. Like, the guy is, is fucking weird. Now, keep in mind, they go to this place because they still running from that big-ass boat that was chasing them in the first episode. I'm sure that we have not heard the last of that yet. And Travis is in this kind of like study talking to this dude. Now, as weird as this dude is, man, you can tell he's really done his homework because he's telling Travis, like, this state is down, this state is down, this state is down. There's like, none of this shit is any good. Like, shit's going to hell. He's really, he's telling Travis pretty much everything Travis needs to hear. Meanwhile, Madison is in the kitchen talking to his wife. And you can kind of tell off gate something won't right with that because she the the woman is talking to Madison about you know kids and her job and her previous you know what what she was doing before the Z Pox started going down and you can tell it just ain't something right because she's talking about littler kids and this chick got two small kids so you know off gates get your mind rolling like okay there's something more here. And then you meet this chick's son named Seth. Like, this dude is already carrying around a rifle. You ever just seen somebody, like, just a plain face? Like, the dude had absolutely no expression whatsoever. It kind of weirded me out a little bit, man. Just the old plain face. Like, that's just... This shit was just kind of weird. And it made me kind of uncomfortable him carrying around that rifle a little bit. Nick gets some bonding time with one of the littler kids... And he goes up to his room and, you know, they're talking back and forth. Nick's looking at his figures. And in the midst of all this, the kid mentions something called power pills. And Nick is all like, you know, I don't know what that is or whatever. And the kid says something like, uh, if, I take the pic if I take the pills, then the family stays together. And I was almost really impressed with Nick at that point because he just, like, completely changed the subject. You know what I'm saying? I mean... It, it just kind of impressed me a little bit the the progression that his character has gone through that like kids said something about pills and dudes just like you know whatever what's this figure you find out later on in the episode that this whole notion that we've all been having about there being some underlying condition with strand we find that to be true we still don't know what it is we catch him on the phone with somebody telling them that he's going to meet them at a certain location we're probably going to see that next episode the world couldn't sustain itself, so it stepped back and said enough, and this is his course correction. Now, when he said this to Travis, uh, it, to me, I don't know about anybody else, it made a lot of sense. Like, be, And I think the main reason is why Kirkman has never told us exactly what caused the outbreak. So, to me, 
that logic actually makes a lot of sense. We see Chris walk down to where everything is at the fence line uh, with their oldest son to clear out some walkers. And they did it, you know, a lot like we've seen it at the prison in the original show. But um, it, I thought this was a really awesome scene because you seen Chris, like Chris did that shit like a boss, yo. He just, he was straight up just plugging them walkers through that fence. And, you know, I think with Travis coming down and seeing him do that and then be like, okay, you know, come on, let's go. And he, Chris just being like, hold on a minute, I got one more. And then, you know, Travis having to sit there and watch him do that. Even with all that knowledge, you know, even with all the shit Travis knows now, it still could be kind of hard to watch your kid do some shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But I also feel on the flip side of that, that it was kind of good for Travis to to go through that, to witness Chris doing that and, you know, to just be in that situation because I feel like now that he knows Chris is, is like that and can do stuff like that and will do stuff like that, I really hope that makes his character evolve more into this world. And just when I thought Nick was in the clear and still going to start doing good, his damn pill head side came out in him. He started rummaging through shit through the house, uh, in the bathroom, looking at the pill bottles and shit, seeing what he could find. But it's not necessarily a bad thing because he found these yellow and black pills that even it, like the look, just as soon as he looked at them, you knew as a viewer that something won't right. I mean, you got a pill head looking at some pills with a look like, what the fuck? So automatic, you knew something was going on. I will say though, they better be glad they had a pill head on board because the boy knows his pharmaceuticals. He was the one that figured out the shit was poison and told Travis and Madison at the end of the episode. So, you know, thumbs up for that one. It cuts back to Strand and Salazar and we see that the big ass boat that was following him finally goes off the radar. So they finally lose him. Strand gets off the boat for a little while and that's when you see him make that crazy phone call about telling this dude he's going to meet him somewhere in like 24 hours or some shit. I guess maybe he was a gun runner. I could be wrong, but that that's my guess. And this is where we find out, like, the wife of this guy, Gary, I want to say is his name. Uh, she really don't want to be there, man. And she, this is where you all, like, all the weird shit that you kind of been feeling through the episode, it all comes out right here at the end. Because it's like, they end up wanting them to take the two smaller kids. And this is where you find out what them pills was. Because the little girl that caught Nick with the pills, took a pill, killed her. She comes back and bites the mama. Now, that's where she gets like all kinds of fucked up. They end up getting the other little small little boy. They See, first they find out the damn pills. The dude has probably had the pills so they could take them to all die together, honestly. Because when you look, there was a part where Travis and him was setting up, fixing the fence over there. And at, by on the far, you seen where there was like a carnival and probably maybe 200, 300 walkers. So I'm thinking that the dude probably had the pills in case they got overrun by them walkers, just take damn pills and the whole family die. So they get this kid on the boat, right? And then here comes the oldest son with the pointing the damn rifle at every damn body saying that they're trying to kidnap the kid. They're telling him, no, you know, we convinced them to let us take the little boy. And he's all like, no, give him here. And the dude straight up takes the kid, which is not a bad idea, man, because they didn't, they didn't need that kid on that boat with them. The shit that they get ready to go through, nah. And the last scene of the episode, you see the mom walking up the pier as a zombie, right? And you see the oldest son had to hold the little kid's hand. And he basically tells the little kid to turn around and wave at everybody on the boat. So, you know, everybody on the boat's just kind of trying to wave to him, trying to keep his attention because the son ends up having to shoot the mom. Now that was uh, arguably one of the one of the most hardcore like emotional scenes um, of series one and two, in my opinion. Like that was, you know, that was pretty heart wrenching to have to watch that shit, man. They did very well. So no, really, really awesome Walker kills, but it was a good episode for what it was. Um, Travis learned a shit ton in this episode, so that's good. So I'm gonna give this episode an 8. 
Now, it was good. I liked it. I, you know, the whole episode, it kept me interested. Not really on the edge of my seat, but it was still a really good episode. So, an 8 is what it's going to get. But that's about all I got for you guys. Like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. And <clears throat> if you're in my Dead the Zombies group, I am holding a chat thread for that new containment show on the CW tomorrow night. So, we're going to check that out and see how that is. If it's really good, I may even start doing reviews on it. But I love you guys. Dead the Zombies, Trouble Down Productions. You guys rock.